good. Bonsoir tout le monde. Hello everyone. Welcome to the April 8th regular meeting of council. We'll start with roll call. As you can see, um, every, all members of council are present except for uh, Mayor Pierre LaRue. I will have a little bit to say on that in a few minutes, but we're going to start off with the territorial land acknowledgement and moment of reflection followed by the national anthem. I just ask that everyone please stand. Nous reconnaissons que nous sommes sur le territoire non cédé des Anishinaabe et les terres traditionnelles des peuples Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat et Canyon kahaka Nous reconnaissons no notre obligation commune de respecter, d'honorer et de préserver ces terres et les ressources naturelles qu'elles contiennent. Merci. Whereas Canada is founded upon principles that recognize the supremacy of God and the rule of law, let us take a moment of personal reflection. Thank you, Merci. So as I was saying uh, earlier, I got a little thing that I'm going to say about uh, <coughs> about the um, situation with uh, Mayor Pierre LaRue. So good evening and thank you all for coming tonight. As you're aware, Mayor Pierre LaRue has um, announced his resignation from his elected position as mayor of the township of Russell with an effective date expected to be April the 19th, 2024. As the deputy mayor until the end of 2024, I will be acting as mayor until such time as a new mayor is sworn in. In terms of next steps, the Municipal Act is clear on how we proceed. At the next meeting of council following the resignation, council will be presented a report from the clerk to vacate the seat of mayor. At that time, it triggers a 60-day decision period for Council to determine how to fill the vacancy. The options the Council has set out in the Municipal Act are to either hold a by-election or to appoint someone for the rest of the term of Council. That all being said, for this evening's meeting, there is nothing for us to do other than to continue with the business of the Municipality. I would ask that during the question period that there not be any questions on this topic since this is not an item on tonight's agenda. If you have any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, I would refer you to both Mr. LaRue's and the Township's official press releases. Once the report to vacate the Mayor's position is on an agenda, you'll be free to ask any questions to Council on that related topic. I thank you for your understanding. Bonsoir et merci à tous d'être venus ce soir. Comme vous le savez, le maire Pierre Leroux a démissionné de son poste de maire élu du canton de Rousseau avec une date d'entrée en vigueur du 19 avril 2024. En tant que maire adjoint jusqu'à la fin de l'année, j'agirai à titre de maire jusqu'à ce, à ce temps qu'un nouveau maire sera assermenté. En ce qui concerne les prochaines étapes, la loi sur les municipalités est claire sur la manière dont nous procéderons. Lors de la prochaine réunion du Conseil suivant la démission, le Conseil recevra un rapport du greffier pour libérer le siège du maire. 
Le conseil dispose alors d'une période de décision de 60 jours pour déterminer comment combler la poste vacant. Les options offertes au conseil, telles qu'elles sont énoncées dans la loi sur les municipalités, sont de tenir une élection partielle ou de nommer quelqu'un pour le reste du mandat de conseil. Cela étant dit, pour la séance de ce soir, nous n'avons rien d'autre à faire que de poursuivre les affaires de la municipalité. Je demanderai que pendant la période de questions, il n'y a pas de questions sur ce sujet, puisque ce n'est pas sur l'ordre du jour ce soir. Si vous avez des questions, je vous renvoie au communiqué officiel de M. Leroux et du canton. Une fois que le rapport de vacances du poste de maire s'inscrit à l'ordre du jour, vous serez libre de poser au, au conseil toutes questions connexes. Je vous remercie pour votre compréhension. So, I thank you very much for that. So, we will move on for tonight. Um, any additions, deletions, or amendments to the agenda for this evening? I have one at item 18. Um, we'll just say ED Road intersection, stop sign. And that'll be for, for me. So that would be 18A, Madame, uh, Madame, Madame Camille. So I'll, I'll put it out there to move, motion to approve the agenda as amended. This is moved by Councillor Taranowski, seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion is carried. Déclaration d'intérêt pécuniaire. Hearing, seeing none. Adoption of the minutes, the regular council minutes from March 25th, 2024. It's a motion to approve the following minutes as presented. This is moved by Councillor Deacon, seconded by Councillor Taranowski. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion is carried. Présentation, y en a pas. Délégation. Il n'y en a pas. Consent items. All items listed under the consent items will be enacted by one motion. A majority vote is required for the adoption of the consent items. So we have a motion that all items listed under the consent items be received as presented. This is moved by... Councillor Taranowski, seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Questions or comments? Hearing, seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? And the motion is carried. On va, on va maintenant pour, um, aller au rapport des départements et comités du conseil. La première, um, c'est la mise, au, mise à jour sur le complexe récréatif rapport PR 2024-03. Recreation Complex Update Report PR 2024-03. Um, I'm going to ask Monsieur Godin um, if there's uh, someone who wants to speak to this one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening. Um, so tonight is the update for the Class A. If council uh, recalls back in November 2023, Uh, we had, uh, council had decided to um, change the concept uh, of the recreation complex uh, according to uh, budgetary issues. Um, so tonight we've uh, finally finalized the class A uh, because if you recall also that was the class B so we've revamped the concept and then we proceeded to complete the class A. So tonight are the results of the class A concept update. Um, so we have Mr. Uh, Mark Downing with us tonight from our architect firm MGMA from Toronto and he will be presenting the updates. So Mark if you want to present your uh, presentation. Thanks Céline. Thanks for having me tonight. I think maybe we switch it. Uh, 
thanks very much for having us tonight. Um, for us, it's been a uh, it's been an exciting couple of months. Um, to add a little bit to Celine's introduction, I'd also like to point out that as of our November 2nd council meeting at that time, we were hoping to have a, a tender ready set of documents sometime for mid-February. So as a result of the November 2nd meeting, what we heard, and maybe we could go to the next, next slide, what we heard is that we needed to get a little bit more certainty that we were going to be able to bring the project in comfortably on budget, and that was what the Class B cost estimate uh, triggered a, um, a, a desire to tighten up the, the, uh, the design to make that happen. So we entered a phase of what we normally call value engineering, which in plainer terms is we made the building smaller so that we could, we could bring it in on budget. So if you go to the next slide, um, we did that by tightening up on some of the program items in the project. Um, we, uh, we deleted some of the amenities that unfortunately would have been great to have in the project, but we, by removing them, we were able to bring it in with a little more certainty uh, to the number that we were looking for. Um, so we took some time to do that. Um, we, uh, we had the team work through those adjustments, brought the schedule back on track so that we could get back into doing the construction documents so that we could tender. Um, and maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll point out exactly where we are later in the presentation, but just to say um, it's, uh, it was an efficient process from, uh, I can say that um, b just because I saw the team uh, working very hard to make all this happen, and we are going to be uh, tendering the project next week. So uh, um, we, uh, we trust that the Class A estimate is, uh, is the one you wanted to see, and we're confident that the project will, be in, uh, will come in on budget. Um, so for now, why don't I uh, run through the uh, high level, the, a design update explaining w where we are with the rest of the facility. Um, you won't see, in my view, terribly significant changes tonight from what you saw in November, but I will run through it in some detail. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, site plan will, you'll note that it's virtually unchanged. Um, the, the reason for this is that the, the last time we presented this project, it was fundamentally a one-story project with an upper level fitness center and running track. Those amenities, unfortunately, have been removed from the project, but what that means is that the rest of the amenities that, uh, that we heard were, were critical to provide for this building are still in place. So the site plan you're seeing here is relatively identical to what you would have seen at the last presentation. Um, um, same number of parking spots, same number of building amenities, um, landscape architecture intact, uh, um, civil services, site grading, all intact. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, what you'll note in this image, um, you, we no longer have an elevator, we no longer have a stair up to the next level. Um, there are some uh, minor adjustments to some of the dressing room amenities that we were gonna provide, but none that make them smaller. Um, so again, in this drawing, you'll see very little that's changed from the last drawing that you saw. If you can go to the next slide. A reminder too that while all of this was happening, we, are, we, were, uh, we were progressing the engineering design of the project. This image is really, there's not a lot of content for you to scrutinize here, just pointing out that we, when we make these adjustments to the design, we're working with civil engineers, working with landscape architects, architects, mechanical engineers, and all of us are bringing the level of the project up to a tender-ready project at the same time while we're working through these value engineering ideas. So just to point out that the project never halted. We, there was never any sense from our end that things had to stop. We were progressing the design while we were working through these adjustments. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this aerial view is slightly different from what uh, we showed you last time, and you'll note that um, to the north of the project, the high vol volumes in this building, the three rinks, are still essentially two-story volumes. Um, the difference between this image and what you will have seen last time is because there's no upper level track, the building is a little flatter, a little lower. The, the public space of the project, which I'll show you images of in a moment, is now essentially a, a, a single story space. 
It's lofty, there's a lot of sunlight in it, but it no longer has a track overlooking the lobby. And you'll see that in the sort of center of the image, the pedestrian through, fer through fare through the parking lot results in this kind of line through the building that's the main public space. That space is now one story instead of two stories. If we can go to the next image. Um, the quality of the building, the durability of the building, <coughs> the robustness of materials, and the, the, what, we, what we trust is a beautiful and durable set of materials that we're, we're incorporating in the design remain unchanged. Next slide. This is an image that's a little different from the one you saw last time. Again, that's because there is no longer a second level overlooking the main public space of the project. But what we have tried to do is preserve all of the relationships that we think make the project uh, a, a, a beautiful and healthy place to be. Lots of natural light, lots of views out into the courtyard, lots of views out into the existing park, just not that upper level overlooking the lobby. Next slide. Many of the slides I'm about to show will be similar to images you've already seen because, as we say, most of this building remains unchanged. So this is a view from the lobby into the aquatic center, very similar to what you saw last time. No change to the aquatic center, still a six-lane six lap pool plus leisure pool plus universal dressing rooms. Uh, lots of views, lots of natural light, lots of eyes on the pool deck lots of opportunities for parents to watch their kids having swimming lessons. And still, uh, if you can go to the next image, still uh, prepared to have a FINA level competition facility here. So it's six lanes, only six, but, um, but ample space for spectators and space for competition. The next slide. Um, the kind of um, majority of the footprint of the project is, is of course, ice pads. Um, we still have one spectator rink at the uh, east end of the, of the complex, but one of the, uh, one of the value engineering decisions was to bring the number of spectators in that space down from the original, which was 750 seats. We're now down to 250 seats plus 140 standing. Um, it's, uh, Obviously, it would be a thrilling thing to have, uh, to have a, a greater number of people in the rink, but it was one of the compromises we had to make to bring the project in on budget. Next slide. Uh, community hall, unchanged. Uh, our mandate for this design was to have a space where you could have a banquet for 450 people. Um, still a, a generous sunlight-filled space, lots of amenities, bar, kitchens, it's all, none of that program got changed as a result of this value engineering. Uh, next slide. This is a reminder that the, uh, the connectedness of this project to the existing park amenity is, has always been important. Um, there was no time when, uh, when a, uh, uh, a significant portion of the project budget was devoted to that connection, and yet uh, as you see in the site plan, it's really important that this building allows the park uh, to spill into the courtyard. So this is a reminder that the landscape uh, architecture of this project is intact. Next slide. Um, there are um, places to sit. There are great connections between the outdoor space and the indoor space of the project, and all of that remains in the current budget. Um, so sustainability. Um, without specific mandates, we did propose uh, a, a building that, as much as possible, approached a zero carbon facility. Now, we are not, uh, we don't intend to get this building certified by the Canada Green Building Council, but the principles by which we designed it are similar. Um, I wanted to point out that one of the critical goals of this project is to reduce energy consumption that the idea that operating this facility in a business as usual way is, is uh, um, that's a lower bar than we set for this project. Uh, even with the budget constraints, we have, uh, we have um, proceeded with a building that's all electric, a lot of heat exchange in this facility, a lot of recycled energy, a lot of innovation in here, and we did not, uh, we did not feel we had to compromise that to provide you with a, a building that was economical even past the value engineering stage. So just to point out, um, um, this is a heat pump building. Any waste energy that's produced in this building is recycled and used elsewhere in the building. 
Um, we, uh, we specified a refrigeration system, a conventional system, but with the right uh, mechanical design, with the right amount of heat, heat exchangers and heat pumps, we think that this building is extremely efficient, and we haven't compromised on any of that. Um, next slide. Um, so next steps is a s slide that I always, I, I always like to show it to you and then come up with a long list of things we're about to do. We are actually at the end of the design period of this project. Um, if you look at the schedule, the pink line is where we are today. Our Class A costing, which, uh, which we think you'll see has some really good news in it, is complete. Um, the pre-qualification for general contractors is complete. The building hits the street for tender next week. And, um, and within, we hope, within six to seven weeks, we'll know how much this building actually costs. The market will have spoken. We will have, uh, we will have received a number of bids that we think will provide you with enough uh, variety and competition that you'll get a good bid. And uh, we hope that there will be some really great news for you in a couple weeks. Uh, and I think the next slide is, thank you very much for, uh, for having us here. It's been a very um, um, challenging vigorous long road we've uh, we've been down with you but we hope we're uh, we hope we're going to get some great news in a couple of weeks so thank you very much thank you very much that's uh, that's awesome um, I think we've all been waiting for this day and we look forward to uh, to this going out and look forward to being in the ground and using this facility as, uh, as soon as we can um, <clears throat> so I believe that you're on a little bit of a tight time schedule crunch so I'm going to ask Council to suspend the rules of procedure and allow a question period on this topic from members of the public right now um, so that if there are any questions from Eric that he can answer them for us uh, during this time. So I'll ask Council to, if, we, if they're okay to suspend the rules of procedure. I'm seeing shaking heads, yes. We're all in favor. Pardon me? Oh. We need a mover and a seconder, so moved by Councillor Taranowski, seconded by Councillor Deacon. All those in favor, motion is carried. What's that? Yeah, so what we'll do is we're, I'm going to ask uh, from questions from members of Council, and then I'll open it up to the public. So any members of uh, Council? Councillor Taranowski. Merci beaucoup. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, definitely exciting. Um, nice to see it moving forward. Um, and I'm really happy that uh, that we did make these difficult decisions at the time, and it seems to be paying off. So that's exciting. I wanted to just quickly confirm with you: the um, community hall still is being designed in a, as a hall that could be split three ways. Uh, yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Uh, there are there are two um, movable partitions, so that uh, if the if the hall is uh, used for its maximum number of of spaces, there would be three. Uh, each of them is in this kind of 3,000 square foot uh, area. There are so three equal spaces, all of which have access to natural light outdoors, all of which have access to the amenities along the service side to the, to the east of the, of the larger space, uh, all of them with, a, with, a, with that same kind of upfront relationship to the main entrance of the building. Fantastic. And my second question is, uh, you talked about uh, environmental certification. Um, how far are we from going there? Okay, so that, that's a very good question. Um, uh, so a couple of ways of looking at this. Um, when the Canada Green Building Council initiated its zero carbon building program, uh, it's like any other sustainability standard. The requirements become more and more stringent year upon year as we uh, nationally approach our commitment to the climate crisis. Um, so the, the complexity for a project like this one is uh, operationally, this building is going to be operating at a very high level of, uh, of sustainability. Virtually no gas-fired pieces of equipment in this project, S except for one of the backup boilers and a generator. Actually, there are no gas-fired pieces of equipment. Um, so in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, this building is going to be a very high-level performer where we would ha meet some challenges, I think, in getting this building uh, certified is in its embodied carbon. Um, 
some of the ways that designers approach that issue might be, for example, to use a heavy timber structure rather than steel and concrete. Um, those decisions do come with, uh, with a price tag. Mm -hmm. So with this project, where we have a lot of long span spaces where a kind of natural designer's response is to go to steel, uh, where we have a lot of slabs, a lot of concrete in this project, there are some complications with the quality of the soil here that are also addressed with, for better or worse, more subgrade work, more concrete. We might face some challenges getting the, the uh, embodied carbon in this project down to a level where it could be certified. Um, but um, I think the principles by which a, a building approaches a zero carbon standard uh, are met in some aspects of this project. Um, I think, if I'm being frank, I think that's a question that we would have wanted to get into the design process at the beginning, and we would, we would, we would have recommended that you set aside budget for something like that. So in principle, I think we've made some really smart moves. In practice, it would be a challenge to get it certified. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Councillor Lalonde. Yeah, um, I appreciate, you know, the decisions that we had to make and uh, to keep this thing under budget and yeah. and the extra work and the constraints that it put on you to 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 uh, fulfill that request that we made. So I'm grateful for that, that it was it was accomplished. I know we had to cut things out and cut things down um, like. Uh, you know the uh, the junior A concept dressing room, the mm -hmm. sort of stadium type seating, or some would say junior A type seating. I just want I, I I'm confident, but I'd like to hear you tell us that, notwithstanding those cuts, that what we're still ending up with in terms of uh, and now talking about the dressing rooms is, and notwithstanding the the addition of handicap access and all of that, that that we have dressing rooms. As they are now, that are that more than meet the requirements um, uh, going forward with a new facility. That was my only question. I, yeah, I mean, if I, I I'd like to, uh, there's a there's a, a couple of aspects to this project that are uh, quite dear to us as designers, and I, I would say that the dressing rooms, um, there's a, a list of. Um, attributes of those dressing rooms that I think are quite impressive for a project where where we really are uh, attempting to keep the square footage down to meet a budget. Each dressing room is barrier free. Each dressing room has a uh, non-gendered dressing stall with its own shower. Um, I know that uh, Hockey Canada has really upped its game um, in terms of being inclusive for you know. Uh, teams with players of differing genders. Um, and this facility really does try to address those issues. So in addition to being accessible, as you point out, in addition to being barrier free, in addition to each space in each, in, in each dressing room addressing those concerns, there's also this new kind of layer of, I think, sophistication in this project that I don't often see in public buildings, which is the, the addition of the gender neutral stall in each of the dressing rooms. So not once in the facility, not off to the side, not shared with multiple dressing rooms. Each dressing room has its own stall. Um, that I think is, um, that's a very commendable decision on the part of this project team and on the part of this council to make something like that happen. Thanks very much. And I think on, on that aspect, and I know as someone who is pushing hard for that, is the inclusivity factor. Sport is for everyone, and I think, you know, we talk about Hockey Canada, but we're, you know, even Ontario Minor Hockey Association recently came out with a, with a subsequent ruling on providing safe spaces for people to, to dress in, and this meets those, re those requirements, and I think I sent it to everybody when, when, we first, when I first got it as, a, as an official, as a hockey official myself. Um, <clears throat> we got those regulations sent to us, and I sent them to staff. I sent them to the mayor, and I, I believe I sent them. If I didn't send them to council, I can send them to, to the rest of council as well. 
we're meeting those those requirements and that's what i'm so looking forward to seeing in practice and in practicality with this project so i think that that's a big aspect of it <clears throat> so thank you councillor deacon I've, I noticed some tables and chairs that are outside of that community hall space and I know last year we had had discussions about how you know the user experience of being in the hall heading outside or whether that's incorporated in the event somehow so I'm not sure if this is an architect question or an administration question but just wondering um, if you could speak more to that because that's something I noticed that looked new in the drawings maybe from tonight or, or last time but we hadn't discussed it. Um, it would have been uh, that that image would have appeared in our last presentation. Okay. That's a good point. Uh, we have not explicitly discussed the relationship between mm -hmm. indoor space and outdoor space. I can say uh, from the point of view of the design team, so that includes the architects and the landscape architects, there are provisions in the design now that would be acted on by the operators of the facility. So there there are a number of ways of getting from the community hall into the courtyard so that if, for example, you wanted to have an event where, um, a, let's call it, let's say a wedding, that's a good example, where you wanted to have a summer wedding where you have a banquet inside and then spill out into the courtyard afterwards for dancing and drinks, that's something that you could do with this facility. It's an operations decision, but the connection is there. Um, and, uh, and of course, we love to see that potential and looking forward to the photos of it when it's in operation. <laughs> Just a second uh, question as well, more for administration. It's so exciting that we're at this point in the timeline and that we're looking at next week for, for tender. Just congratulations to everyone involved and thank you. I was wondering, um, because there has been work going on on the site, so I'm just curious if administration has any sort of an update on the work that's been going and, and how that aligns with the timeline that we're looking at at this point. Mr. Gaudin, I'll let you push it off. If you want, I can, I can take it. Yeah. Up to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, there are some uh, geotechnical complications with uh, with the site. Um, the the an the first thing is to answer the question. The the uh, the work that's already been performed, uh, that work has basically been concluded, and the whole point of that work was to get that granular that you see on the site in place, loading the site, creating subsurface drainage that will make the site favorable to the next contractor that comes in and to have the granular material on site so that when the next contractor needs it, i.e. to move it around, it's already there. Um, that work has been complete and the site is prepared for the award of the project. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from members of council at this time? No? So I will open it up to the floor. Si vous avez des questions, s'il vous plaît, venir au podium. <clears throat> Please sign your name on the on the sheet and the same criteria applies for when we have the question period later. Um, state your write your name and address on the form, state your name for uh <clears throat> for the record and then ask your question, please. First question is, can we get the final estimate, just the, that last line, final estimate? In terms of dollar value? In terms of dollar we have value. A, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have a closed session um, on that this evening. Mr. Godin? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's correct. So we'll be talking about the, the values in the in closed session. Okay. Um, is there a reason why yeah. It would be done closer. Yes, to to maintain that um, competitive balance for the pricing and the and the costing of this of this project, as you can appreciate, it's substantial. So once I believe, Mr. Godin, correct me if I'm wrong, but once we go to tender and we award the contract, then those numbers will be will be made public. 
but until that time, we, we still need to maintain that, uh, that confidentiality. How does knowing the final estimate affect a truly competitive bid process? Absolutely. You know, I can, Mr. Gaudet, if you want to answer that, I can, I can make a comment, but I'll let Mr. Gaudet answer for now. Uh, yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So basically, we're, uh, it's like we said in the report, and uh, same as a report in November. Uh, it's just a, a question of protecting the township's interests and not divulging uh, all that information um, out to uh, every uh, potential bidder. Uh, so, um, and as per our discussions with uh, the consultants as well, it's, uh, it's normal practice not to divulge that publicly. Okay. And I'll give you an example <coughs> if you want. I was speaking to somebody in, in the construction industry and asked them, well, if you knew how much a project was, and I throw out a number of $200 million, what are you going to bid? $220 million. So I'm, it, it doesn't do us any good to put that number out into the public at this point in time. I'll disagree with you on that one, but anyway. Um, I'm just, I just shared a story that I, that I had with somebody. So you can disagree with the concept, but the story holds true. True. Thank you. True. That, 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 I, that I can't argue with. Um, next thing, back in June of last year, you passed a borrowing bylaw, and it had a, um, a project cost of 108 million 400,000. Does that borrowing bylaw that you passed, which was 02366, I have a copy here, uh, still stand? Mr. Godin? Mr. Uh, Dagenier? Uh, yeah, I'll handle this one. Um, the, the, the bylaw is still active. The bylaw, what, what the bylaw was doing was providing um, the administration the authority to, to fill out the application with Infrastructure Ontario. Um, so that application was, uh, was filed, and, and um, the bylaw is still active. Okay. Uh, how many companies pre -qualled? Mr. Godin, is that, a, is that an answer that we can provide? I'm seeing the contract, the, the consultant saying yes. Madame Guitton? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. So what we can say is we had 13 uh, companies that uh, tendered for the pre-qualification. How many passed prequel? Are we allowed to give that number? I'm seeing the consultants shaking their head yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's eight. So eight companies out of the 13 passed their pre-qualification, if that was your okay. question, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, that, that, that was what I wanted to know. There, there's, will there be a truly competitive Process, bidding process. I believe we feel that there will be a, there will be an absolutely good okay, bidding so process. There's only one or two you don't, but if there's thir there's eight, yep, your chance. I get of it. Getting over. Thank you very much. My name is Rhonda Bradley. I, I live at 159 Edie Road. My question is um, to uh, have more information about the soil quality and whether we were required to have a contingency plan in the Class A budget um, in the event that once we begin construction, those soil complications uh, deliver a surprise. So, Monsieur Godet, Madame Guital, do we have contingencies in there in case there's issues with the soil? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Yeah, we do have contingencies. Okay, thank you very much. That has been that has been accounted for in the project. I'm also looking for more information about what those complications were. Are there things that have been identified at this point that we have not been able to to fix or to solve for? So at this point, it would only be if during construction something comes up, we have contingencies during that time frame. At this point in time, everything meets our standards for what we are proposing at this time. Is that my understanding, Mr. Yes. Godin, Madame Guiteau, and correct. from the consultants? That's what I'm hearing from everybody. I'm just wondering what the geotechnical complications or concerns were. The geotechnical 
Uh, maybe I could refer uh, Mrs. Bradley to the report that was presented back in September, I believe, concerning the whole geotech uh, problem that we had and that we, the, the, the new way of doing things. That and that report is online from September? Yes, I'm pretty sure it was September. Okay. So that's in the September report. Thank you. Are there any other questions uh, on this topic? It's a question. Um, one quick question. Um, were th for this project. Excuse me. Um, oh, oh, sorry, we just need your name, please. Oh, Christine Gravel, Reiston Bell. Thank you. Um, for this project, um, why was the facility like that? We we applied for grants, did we not? And I'm wondering why we were why this project was, did not get any grants. Um, well, no grant. From my understanding, no grants have been available un, as of yet. We cons we constantly search for funding partners, right? Whether that be grants with the federal government, the provincial government, or other funding arrangements, that doesn't mean we will not continue to look for those opportunities to um, offset some of our uh, expenses. However, we've built the budget in a manner for which we would able, we'd be able to sustain this project on our own. We didn't want to make sure, we didn't want to make it contingent on receiving a grant, thus further delaying the project down the road and costing more money. Uh, Councillor Ternoski. Merci. Also, just to clarify that, that um, the Ford government did uh, release $200 million that is supposed to go towards these types of projects. So I suspect and I'm uh, excited to see what we're going to come up with and uh, what, what piece of that we could get for this. Yeah, in the budget announcement last week, there, there was a fund that was, that was proposed. So we hopefully would be able to get something out of that. I have a question about tax implications. In the city of Ottawa, say for a pool, there's a population base of 50,000 people to basically pay for a pool. But in the township of Russell, we're currently at, what, 20,000 residents? With projected growth, I don't, I don't see how the numbers add up for us to be able to support a pool, three ice pads, um, in the interim, two additional ice pads while we phase across. I, I just feel like we're being taxed up. So, the so, so the then there's the sewer project coming I'll, I'll, in. Uh, let's not talk about the sewer project. Okay. We're talking strictly on the rec complex okay. at this point in time. And the funding for the red complex, we, we, had a, we passed a bylaw on the funding proposal that was a 1% tax increase for 10 years. On top of that, we're, there's $150,000 a year from growth that was put into that plan, plus the development charge aspect that was put into, that, that gets put into the, pro, into the project. So from a taxation perspective at this point in time, based on what everything that we've done, it would be a 10% tax increase over a 10 year period that we've put in place. And that started three years ago, four years ago, it goes until 2028. So that's what your tax implication is at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaudet, if I misspeak, please make sure to keep me honest. Thank you. It goes for the rest of council too. Mary Chartra, good evening. Um, I noticed that the complex is going to be heated with uh, heat pumps, um, which is fine. However, I am concerned that when um, they've got a bit of a reputation that when it gets really cold that they can't keep up with uh, heating a building uh, sufficiently. Are, are we at all concerned Just up, about up that? Up this way only, okay. no, not that okay. way, please. Are we at all concerned about that? So, Mr. Gaudet and Madame Guital, um, if we need to go to the consultant, I see Mark raising his hand. So. I think, Mark, if you want to go over to where Madame Guitar is, that would be great. Or if you want to stand at the podium. Okay. And just speak this way. That way we get the... Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, 
so that's correct actually that um, that uh, certain types of heat pumps uh, the efficiency drops when the outside air temperature drops below and the, the sort of rule of thumb is minus 10 Celsius um, and so any building that uses air source heat pumps like this one does your your question is well taken because that's a, that's actually true um, however the way that heat energy is exchanged in this project isn't just through the air source heat pumps there are um, there are boilers there's uh, glycol as a medium hot water as a medium to move heat energy through the building so when the temperature drops below that minus 10 there are backup heat systems that come on, usually having to do with hot water, that then circulate that heat energy through the building so the building stays comfortable. Um, when we look at using heat pumps for a project of this scale, we would also investigate ground source heat pumps, which are more robust and some people say more efficient and predictable than air source heat pumps, but they're more expensive as well. So um, the, uh, the mechanical designers are aware of the um, limitations and challenges of an air source heat pump scheme. Um, in this case, um, we are confident that the building will perform as anticipated and be a comfortable project. Thank you very much for that response. Thank you very much for the question. Are there any other questions? Councillor Taranowski, while uh, Mr. Bass steps up to the podium. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, uh, going back to that uh, finance question earlier on. I think there is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Monsieur Dagenet, but I think there's a full financial plan online that we have available, right? Um, I think, yeah, so that's available, and I encourage you to go take a look at that. Thank you very much, Councillor Tarnowski. I guess you just answered oh. my question. <laughs> Name, uh, please. <laughs> oh, Tony Bass. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, I know we started with a $75 million project, if I'm not wrong, and then it went up to a hundred and some million dollars. And everybody keeps saying that we're gonna have the funds available for this project. Is there a certain amount that you guys actually have on paper saying, listen, it's gotta cost this much, and if it goes over that, we're not doing it? Because I know as, as a businessman myself, if I'm doing a project, I cannot let this go over this, over a certain amount, because I know I can't afford it. I know it's tax dollars that's probably paying for this project. A lot of, the, a lot of it is tax dollars. But as a resident of Russell Township, I would like to have a sports complex, don't get me wrong, but to me it's at what cost? And that's on that's on all of our minds. What cost is it going to be? Yeah, and, and, and it just it seems like every time, every couple <coughs> of years it goes up, more, I think, more okay, Mr. Bass, I think that's more speculative than anything. We have, all of our reports have been published online. You have all the documentation. Monsieur Gaudin, we have uh, an internal uh, spending limit as well as we have a municipal spending limit that we cannot exceed. So we do, okay. we, all of that's been publicized and we are going into closed session later on this evening to further discuss. So. Is, where would I find this information, if I may ask, Mike? Sir, Mr. Mr. Gaudin? Uh, wait, Mr. Mr. Ma. Um, so all the financial updates and, and reports on the rec complex are, are on our website and, uh, on russell.ca in the rec recreation complex section. Um, as you know, though, like, since last November, the, the details of the costing have been kept confidential, and that will continue to be the case until we do bring back uh, a report to council with the uh, tender results. Um, but before council is put in a position to, to award the contract, uh, the, the full financial plan, inclu including the capital costs and, uh, and the operational costs, are going to be made public and uh, available to you to, to consult and ask questions on. Thank you very much. Councillor Ternowski? And just to clarify, too, that although the, the, uh, like the, our limit, our ceiling, is kind of not public right now for competitive reasons, I can assure you that, that council and staff have brought a lot of information here and we've had to make some difficult decisions as we just saw we've cut out a bunch of stuff because we want to make sure that we come within that so as you were alluding to um you know that that ceiling that you don't want to go over or else the project doesn't work we're kind of looking at that on a regular basis making sure that as a taxpayer as a taxpayer myself and uh, that we are not you know punishing our future residents uh, with something that's not affordable okay uh may i ask if we go to the website and find out how this 
project is going to be funding, when could we bring that information back if we have questions on it? How could how could we bring back that? Those That's questions a, to so council? you could do you can do multiple things. So to come back to this table would have to be when we're awarding the contract. Okay. So that would be according to this June, in June sometime. You can go look at that information and you can contact any member of council. You can contact administration. Mr. Dagenet is there to, to answer any questions that you have. Any member of council would be more than willing to sit down and, and discuss it with you, okay. if you and answer any one of your questions. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to clarify one point that, you know, we talked, I think the question came up or the comment was that taxation is paying for, for most of this project. I can assure you that taxation and growth development is paying for this, pro this project. And I would hesitate to say half and half, but it's pretty close with the amount of funding that we are reserving for on an annual basis. Mr. Godin, am I, am I off there too much or are we pretty close? No, that's accurate. Thank you very much. And that's in, that's in our report as well. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No, il n'y a pas d'autres questions. Well, thank you very much uh, for that report. That was excellent. Uh, very good engagement from everyone in the room as well. Thank you very much. When we get to the public questions on meeting of the day, the, this topic will not be part of those questions tonight, okay, just so that we know. All right, so we will move on to the next report, indexation of development charges rate, report CSAS FS 2024-04. And it reads that council received report CSAS FS 2024-04 dated April 24th, April 8th, 2024, and adopt a proposed bylaw to amend schedule C1 of the user charges, user fees and charges bylaw 2023-138 as adopted on December 11th, 2023 and approve an indexation of 4.1% for development charges effective July 1st. Now, I believe this is standard now. We've done this for a few for about a few years now that we start indexing every six months. Is it every every year, every six months, Mr. Gaudet? Right, Merci, Mr. Massa. That's right. So we've been doing this for two or three years, every six months. Okay. Anything different this time around? It's pretty standard. Okay. No. Any questions from members of uh, council? Uh, Councillor Deacon. I just had a question about the daycare, the fees that are um, designated for daycare from uh, development charges. Just wondering what, uh, if those funds are going right into a reserve, for example, or if they are um, going into operations for the daycares that are already operating. How is that, and how is that if, how is it linked to growth in that case? Mr. Dagenet. Thank you for the question. Uh, Madam Deacon, um, so it's essentially, essentially, we collect DC for the daycare, and these funds are to be used for costs related to the expansion of the service. So we're, we're not using them op for the operation. Follow up? So those would be going into a reserve at this point, then, if I yeah, understand correctly. The, yeah, it's in the reserve. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this item? No. Okay. Subvention et contribution communautaire à part PR 2024-02. Que le Conseil reçoit le rapport PR 2024-02 daté du 8 avril 2024 et adopte refuser un don ponctuel d'un montant de 850 et adopte un montant en nature de 400 pour la location de la salle communautaire Camille Pichet en brun pour l'événement de la danse for C, the dance for CF qui aura lieu le 20 avril 2024. Any questions or comments on this item? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is a recommendation 240304CI of the Township of Russell Public Library Board to extend the free access to the Municipal Sports Dome Training Center, the, the gym, and walking track for library staff. The council received this recommendation dated March 21st, 2024 from the Township of Russell Public Library Board with respect for free access to the gym. 
um, the Municipal Sports Training Centre and the walking track of the Township of Russell. Um, Mr. Gaudet, do you want to speak to this one? Uh, wait, merci, Mr. Mayor. Um, I can speak on the administration side. I don't know if Councilor Deacon or, um, or Madame uh, Seguin has uh, information to add, but essentially, from my understanding, the, the Library Board had a look at their uh, HR policies and are recommending to uh, to make a, a slight modification to match our practice of uh, providing free access to the gym to their uh, to employees. Um, so I believe this is what's uh, being presented to council. And that would be to mirror what what the township uh, staff are already accessing? That's correct. Okay. Uh, Councillor Deacon. Just to provide some additional context, the library as an employer does currently have a program for a library staff. So there is a budget line um, as part of the HR going resources going into fitness programming support for the staff. So this would be aligning, uh, removing that programming and aligning it with the one that the employees of the municipality are following. So I just had a question for administration, which is what are concerns about financial implications of this on the municipal side or? Mr. Yep, through Ms. Mayor. So there's no concerns uh, on a financial side um, for the administration. Uh, we have uh, spoken with Madame Seguin. We'll, we're working on uh, if, if there should be an internal transfer from uh, from the library uh, budget to the, to the recreation budget just to account for this. Um, but essentially, um, uh, it's we're not renting out a, a space that's being offered to anybody else. It's just allowing people in the building, so it's uh, there, there's no concerns. Okay. Councillor Ternoski. Can I just ask clarification, Monsieur Gaudin, um, in terms of... Uh, of a cost, like, w do we have a line item for staff of the township uh, in terms of uh, attributing a cost to this pro program? Uh, through Ms. Yeah. Mayor, so we don't have a no for for the township in themselves for township staff. There's no uh, there's no line item. There's no transfers being done from uh, one department to the other. Uh, where it differs with the library, and um, we're actually undergoing a review and uh, a preparation preparation of a memorandum of understanding, or just kind of a. A document with guidelines to follow as far as uh, how to how to account for that. Um, the library board being a distinct uh, entity, um, just asking ourselves those questions, and we're kind of in the middle of that. So this uh, this recommendation comes forward now. So we'll be considering this as an example as we uh, finalize those discussions. Follow up. Follow up. just confirm my my full support for this, and and I just I feel remiss that I didn't mention the library staff when we brought this up originally. Yeah, that should have been a no-brainer for me, who sat on the board for a long time. So je m'excuse beaucoup, mais je supporte ça à 100%. Councillor Deacon. J'aimerais aussi juste confirmer combien d'employés de la bibliothèque ça ça s'appliquera en 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 actuel. Monsieur Godin. Merci, Monsieur Madame. Je vais laisser Madame, Madame Seguin Couture répondre à cette question. Monsieur le maire, conseiller, conseillère, on parle de 11 personnes, dont 4 à temps plein, 4 à temps partiel et 3 étudiantes. Mais si j'ai bien compris, les étudiantes, quand ils terminent leur contrat, ça serait terminé aussi. OK. Any other questions, Councillor uh, Deacon? Uh, I believe I would need to. We would need someone to propose to action this. So I would like to um, move to have this um, adopted by the council. Okay. So, so I believe that needs to be pulled. For well, this report addition. isn't in the actual. Uh, just just to receive it. So okay. I guess we would add that in, or do we just do it right now? Uh, no, we we would separate it. So yes. then it we'll would separate be it. Voted on, okay. and then you, they can make an amendment, and then you can vote on the amendment as presented by the okay. library in their motion. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we'll do that. Yes. Um, we'll move on to item twelve: reports from an investigator ombudsman. We have none. Avis d'amation on en a pas. Question period on meeting of the day. Just a reminder: questions must be in relation to an item on the agenda. Before asking your question, fill in your name and address on the sign-in sheet. If you wish to receive a response from a member of council or staff, please leave a phone number or email on the sheet. And then just state your name before asking your question. And I'm going to ask one extra thing. Please state the item number that you're actually referencing in your question. 
So please, if you have any questions or comments, s'il vous plaît, allez au podium. I wrote my name down already. Is that okay? okay. Perfect. Thank you. I have a question. So this um, question period appears as item number 14 on the agenda. However, the strategic discussion 21A on public engagement policies right at the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. How is, why is that? Because I can't ask questions on it if it's at the end and it hasn't been discussed yet. Mr. Godin. Uh, oui, merci, Mr. Maire. Um, so um, the reasoning behind how the agenda was uh, formulated that way, I'm not, I'm not too certain, but I can, I can to reassure uh, council and the public uh, this strategic discussion is really kind of, um, the intent of it is to really have Council's feedback before we move too far into the policy um, uh, development. Uh, I, on the public engagement policy piece itself, uh, there will definitely be a lot of opportunities for the public to, to comment. Uh, there will be a public engagement piece to, to the development of this. Um, so at this point tonight, we're just really looking to have a discussion kind of, not informal, but just more, more of a brainstorm. High level. A high level as far as what council's priorities are. Uh, so we did made the decision to, to keep it uh, at the end of the agenda. And no, res no, there's no resolutions, no bylaws, nothing for tonight. So that, that will all come afterwards. I think it's just a very initial discussion with, uh, with staff and, and uh, council. Super, and then if we have questions based on what's discussed tonight, then we can raise that with councilors separately. Right? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? It's no question. Tony Bass. Um, 11B, indexation of development charge rates. Yep. I was just wondering, uh, what are the other townships close by charging on, uh, uh, for their indexation for their development charges? Mr. Godin, uh, Mr. Dagenet, would you have any idea what other municipalities are charging neighboring? I think it's all it's all dependent on what projects they have coming up or Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that's right. So it's I don't have that information today as far as what the, the DC rates are for all the municipalities. Um, when we did develop the DC, when we did a DC study and we uh, developed those rates, uh, we did at that point in time have a comparable with uh, all our neighboring municipalities. Um, so that information will be available if uh, that study was done back in 2021. Uh, so on our website, and if it's not on our website, well, it would be on our council agendas. Um, I'm not sure exactly when in 21, but we had those uh, those comparables presented to council. And as far as the indexing, it is common practice, and it's pretty standard across the province. I think there's only two there's two major suppliers for the for these studies, so we we mainly uh, follow the same practices across uh, across the province. There could be some uh, some differences here and there, but. Uh, this year is uh, definitely common. And practice. correct me if I'm wrong on this, but if we don't index, we we then fall behind, right? Like that's the key thing. We need to make sure that growth and development pay for growth and development. So that's why there's this indexing and we've put it in place to ensure that the developers get a heads up on what's coming. So this is now for July. So they now know a couple of months in advance where that where that number is going to be, so that they can then project and and set their rates and, and whatnot in uh, for their for their um, their sales of, of of new homes and whatnot. Okay, uh, the only reason why I ask that is because we're really dependent on the growth for the sports complex, and I'm just I'm just hoping that we're not indexing ourselves at a higher rate than other communities close by and that the developers decide we're going to go there because it's a lot cheaper to get permits than it is around here. Yep. No, that's, uh, that's, that's always a, a question and a concern that we have is, not, is, not, is ensuring that our development charges are competitive within neighboring communities, and, and I believe we, we maintain that with that indexing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Are there any other questions? Doug, uh, my question is basically... Sorry, the name again, please. Doug, uh, you, 
the mayor a few weeks ago indicated Did we you get it? our first name. Sorry. We, uh, we write our write our full names on the sheet. And then you give your full first, name. First name. No, full oh, name. Oh, sorry, Doug Estbrooks. Thank you very much. With respect to the reserve fund, is it one number that's kept on books, or do you have items set up under the reserve fund? And where do I look? To Res see reserve fund for what? For everything. The term reserve no. fund, what does it mean to you? When you say you set reserves up by way of development charges, or for, for example, um, uh, a few percentage points on the operational budget each year, where is the information kept in terms of where is it one reserve fund, or is it itemized in terms of what you're reserving it for? So, Mr. Gaudin, I'll let you, I'll, I'll, I'll just pass it over and to where you. Where would I look for that? Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Dagenier. Yes, um, you can find this uh, information. Oh, this, this way? Sorry, you can find this information on uh, our website. It's uh, in the budget, and it's every every department or every program has their own reserve, so it's not all blend into one. We actually keep track of each. Uh, so we have a reserve for daycare. We have a reserve for um, uh, parks and rec. We have, so uh, every item has a reserve. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ensido Castillo, any other questions on meeting of the day? Seeing and hearing none, we're going to move forward to resolutions. A motion that we, that council approve all recommendations listed on the agenda under items 11, reports from departments and council committees. We'll get this on the table and then we will uh, separate that one item. This is moved by Councillor Deacon, seconded by Councillor Taranowski. And then I believe there's a motion to take out item D. This is moved by Councillor Deacon and seconded by Councillor Taranowski. So all those in favor of removing item D from the consent items, Motion is carried. And now we will go to the main motion. <clears throat> motion that council approve all recommendation listed under, on the agenda under item 11 reports from departments and councils except for item D. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Now we'll go to item D. And this is the request from the library board to allow for their staff to have um, access to the to the gym. So, is there someone that wants to put an amendment on the table for that, Councillor Deacon? Um, that the council of Russell Township approve to extend the free access to the municipal sports zone training center and walking track for library staff, as presented in a recommendation from the library board. Okay, Madam Committee, you got that. Yes, Mr. Mayor, so we can just say we'll add the three last paragraphs in the library's motion, just a match. Okay. Is that, is that does that, what does that work? Okay, so this is moved by Councillor Deacon, seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Uh, questions? Councillor Ternowski. Just in the wording, could we look at uh, wording it so that it, we're just saying it mimics the, the program that we have for township staff? Madam Kennedy. That's up to you if you want to amend. Yeah, so whatever, it just like a, as we move forward, if there is ever a change in the township plan, then it would just automatically change with the library, like so the library staff. So that would be staff. another amendment if you want to add that, because we can put the motion that was presented by the library. So if you want to add, like. Let's just see what the, what the motion actually says. So it's. The, from what uh, Councillor Deacon asked, we would add the three last paragraphs to the motion. Est-ce qu'on peut juste uh, put it bigger? Appeler s'il vous plaît. Merci. So, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. So, mon seul point, c'est juste qu'on devrait, in the motion, it just says that we mimic the, the, the program that we have for township staff. If there was a way to just do that, that way it assures that 
that whatever changes happen, if there happens to be a change, or maybe we have an add-on at some point and we use, I don't know, free ice skating or something, then it would automatically be done. We wouldn't have to uh, adjust the bylaw. So can I make a recommendation and I'll go to the mover and then the seconder on it? Can we say something to the effect of in consideration of the request at item D that council approves the access in accordance with the township staff program? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, in, a, in alignment with the, the current uh, township uh, staff program. Mr. Gaudain, does that make sense on your side? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I think for us that's, uh, that's clear. And does that work on, on your side for, for, the, the, for the amendment? So, so we'll forget? For, yeah, forget, forget that just that. in consideration of, item, of the request by the library board at item D, that council, that council approves um, synchronization of that program with the township uh, staff program. I think that meets, uh, and then that way there, like uh, Councillor Ternoski said, as that program evolves, it'll evolve for the, for the library staff as well. Does that work, Councillor Deacon? Councillor Lalonde, we're good? All right, uh, Madame Kennedy, we're good? Okay. So I, it's on the table. I will, any other questions or comments? I'll call the question. All those in favor? And the motion is carried. Excellent. We'll move into item 16, bylaws. Motion that council approve bylaw 2024-028 inclusively for first, second, and third reading as listed on the agenda. Bylaw 2024-028 being a bylaw to amend Schedule C-1 development charge fees of the user fees and charges bylaw 2023-138, reference number 11B. This is moved by Councillor Lalonde, seconded by Councillor Taranowski. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion is carried. <coughs> La part d'affaires nouveau en y en a pour. Other business, um, 18A. Um, this one was for me. I believe that uh, there was, um, a, I think previously, I think last year, the year before, a request from council was made to look at uh, the intersection of Edie Road and Route 200. And on just, I think, within the last week, there was another significant accident at that location. Uh, so I'm going to ask council to, if they would support in directing staff to come back with another report on that item and see whether or not now makes sense to actually put a stop sign there. Um, so if, uh, if that's something that council would consider, um, any, any questions, comments on that? More of a direction, Councillor Lalonde? Oui, j'aimerais juste dire que on, on a une situation comme dans celui-là, comme on a, on a eu l'année passée euh, à l'autre intersection où ce qu'on a rajouté, euh, où on a créé un four-way stop. Moi, dans mes aventures en vélo, euh, l'automne passé, je traverse plusieurs de ces genres d'intersections-là, surtout les, les routes 400, 200. Je pense que ça vaudrait la peine de regarder les autres en même temps parce que le défi, c'est qu'il arrive du trafic des fois qui arrive à une vitesse assez euh, élevée et ils euh, ne savent pas s'ils peuvent passer ou pas passer. Euh, ça serait peut-être bien cette fois-ci de regarder les, les « look at the other suspect intersections maybe that resemble » the one we're talking about now and, and maybe cover off on all of them at the same time. Parce que moi, je suis au courant de d'autres intersections où à l'est un peu euh, euh, qui, qui, qui pour moi sont un, et risquent d'être problématiques aussi. Mais je pense que ça serait bien de, like I say, to look at those key sort of route intersections, like the one that intersected Edie and uh, the one that intersected Hamilton Road and etc. etc. De faire ça tout en même temps. Peut-être de 
ou non de revenir dire il n'y a, a pas d'issue là-bas parce qu'il n'y a pas eu d'accident ou il y a une issue là-bas même s'il n'y en a pas eu d'accident je ne sais pas I, instead of going at this piecemeal it might uh, just a, a comment ok and any other questions comments so I don't I, for me from my perspective I don't I'm not expecting a report next week next meeting just to be clear but I think if we can look at some that intersection and maybe a few others that are similar in nature and come back to come back to council with something maybe within the next month, month and a half, if that makes sense, couple next couple of meetings. Mr. Godin. Uh wait Monsieur Mr. Marshall, the request makes sense. I, I don't know if Monsieur uh, Bogon wants to speak to it as far as uh, the effort level it would require. Well, I just want to ask council exactly. Um, so it's to look at all intersection without a four-way stop in our rural setting. So that would be kind of a, a direction. That seems to be. Let's have a let's have a look and see and and see what we come back with. But I I I know Route 200 and ED. There's been some significant accidents over the last few years that we keep getting notifications on and maybe coordinate with. Um, Chief McBain as well on that, who have maybe some statistics on that. So. Puis le, le, le temps est, est bon dans le sens que nous sommes en train de refaire tous nos, euh, nos comptes de trafic euh, ouais. euh, au travers de la municipalité. Donc c'est de l'information que nous avons besoin pour pouvoir. Euh, donc, Excellent. Si, si on un rapport dans un dans un temps un échéancier de deux mois, je pense que c'est très raisonnable. Okay. So we're good. Councillor Lalonde? Je vais, vais t'envoyer une coupe d'intersections de, 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 en particulier qui, 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 que j'ai remarqué dans le temps pour aider un peu là-dedans. Là. Ils sont comme si un peu à l'est. Au, au sud, si on veut. OK. Excellent. Merci. Um, public consultations and hearings, we have none. Announcements. Do we have any announcements, uh, members of council? Councillor Deacon. I just wanted to take a moment to commend the work of the Environmental Advisory Committee who has organized a community cleanup along the trail for April 28th, um, as well as other community or, uh, groups who have organized activities. I, I'm seeing a lot of communication coming from residents concerned about um, litter, for lack of a better term, around our, our, our spaces and our beauty. And I'm just so proud to have um, residents and committee members who are stepping up to lead the rest of the community to undertake cleanups like this. So I encourage everyone to participate especially in that April 28th, one that will be along the, uh, the recreational trail. And I wanted to remind folks that there is an announcement taking place tomorrow morning at the uh, Sports Dome. Um, it will be announced, I believe, thanks to the United Counties of Prescott and Russell that uh, one of their community grant programs that the, uh, the walking track at the dome will be free of cost, so it's uh, a wonderful action that the mayor uh, took to to bring that to the counties and uh, something to celebrate that announcement tomorrow at 11 a.m. Excellent. Thank you very much, Councillor Deacon. Anything else? No? So we'll move into item 21, um, strategic discussion. So public engagement policy. I think there's a few questions that uh, that staff had on there. So. What I've uh, what I've spoken with uh, Mr. Gaudin is ab about is that I'm gonna I'm gonna let him lead this discussion and see what he needs from us and then he'll uh, he'll take that that information away and then come back to council uh, at a later date. So, Mr. Gaudin, the floor is yours. Uh, yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, before we get into this uh, strategic discussion, I just want to say a quick word, uh, given that it's going to be the first time we use this section of the, the council agenda formally. Um, so, in our con current strategic plan, we do have objectives revolving around townships communication plan. And ensuring residents remain informed and uh, and engaged. Excuse me. They remain informed and properly engaged. Um, one of our initiatives in order to achieve this objective is to develop a public engagement policy. Uh, so before beginning the works and the, the development of the policy, we wanted to initiate this strategic discussion. So the goal for tonight really is for council just to have dialogue, uh, just kind of brainstorm on a high level, 
uh, on what are the outcomes that you're looking for for this policy. Uh, we're hoping for the discussion to revolve around why it is important and what specific challenges you're hoping to have addressed from this policy. So just to be clear, so no decisions are going to be taken tonight. Um, the administration will be taking notes as, a, as the discussion uh, goes forward. And uh, we'll be using those notes and uh, maybe refer back to the dis discussion uh, as we draft the policy. Um, so I also, I also wanted to note that for tonight, this is really intended to be a discussion between council members. Um, however, there will be uh, opportunities for the general public to, uh, to have their say uh, and to participate in the process. So although the specific engagement platform has yet to be decided on, we can assure you that there will be a public consultation process and part of the development of, uh, as part of the development and the adoption of this policy. Um, and council will also have more chances further along in the process to pro provide feedback and uh, suggestions uh, as we move ahead. So tonight is really a starting point, um, just to make sure that uh, right off the bat, we're working, our, our work is gonna be aligned with council's <coughs> vision. So we've prepared a series of guiding questions that were sent to you in advance and that, I, that are on the, on the screen right now. Um, they're there to navigate the conversation. However, I encourage you to engage freely and to uh, allow the uh, organic flow of ideas to lead the discussion. So with that, I'm just gonna leave the discussion uh, or the table to, to, to you four. And like I said, we're gonna take notes. Um, and if I see that, if we see that there's uh, specific questions we need to get back to, we can, uh, I just might just put my hand up to, to mention it, but uh, I'd like for, to try this out to, to let the, the discussion roll with council members. Okay. So I'll open it up to members of council for questions, comments, and input. Councilor Taranowski. Did you want our answers to the questions? Did I send you mine, incidentally, Mr. Gaudet? I believe I did. Uh, I'm not sure if we've received, I, I know we received some, some answers to the questions uh, by email, but um, really, the like, it, it, sure, it would be good to have answers to the question, but at the same time, they're really there more to guide the discussion to, and to, to, to explain to council what we're looking for, uh, which essentially is really to focus on the why of it all. Like, what, what are the outcomes that we want to achieve uh, with this policy? If there's anything specific on, on in each of your end. We, obviously on our end, like for the administration, we we have a lot of expertise and, uh, and uh, experience, so we'll be able to, to draft a policy, but we still wanted to touch base with council um, at, the, at the start of the process to have your input. Okay, Councilor Tarnowski. Okay, I'll take about 15, 20 minutes here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, um, in, in my opinion, so going to the first question anyways, what are the hopes uh, of, uh, of what we're looking for in terms of public engagement? I think I'm just gonna go with the main headings here. Obviously, informed decision-making on our behalf. Uh, the more we have an engaged community, the better it is for us uh, to get feedback and, and to, uh, to see different perspectives, and I think that's extremely important. I think it, uh, it, uh, it's important from a transparency and trust perspective, and so the more we engage, uh, that's an important aspect. Community empowerment, I think, is important. Uh, it really allows our community and members of the community to feel that they do have a voice, um, not only every four years when we're elected, but, but at any point in time they, they, can, um, they can engage and, and they feel empowered. Obviously, increased public awareness. So, so whatever program we come up with, um, I think will will support that awareness piece, which is always important. And I know we're continuously trying to evolve that. Uh, I think it supports conflict resolution. So, by engaging the public early and often, I think we we uh, could avoid misunderstandings um, and really kind of be a little more proactive. Uh, with our community and, and I think just heading off some potential issues as they arise. Enhanced community well-being, adaptability and innovation and really strengthened partnerships and, and partnerships with our residents but also with community groups, with local businesses uh, and all other stakeholders. I think uh, we all say the more minds come together, um, the better um, the better we have, the better we are and the better decisions we can make. On the flip side, I, I also wanted to state that uh, my fear when we don't have enough engagement is that the danger uh, is having engagement dominated by a small number of vocal residents and that leads to poli policy shortcomings and failures, conflict, polariza polarization. Um, it, it breeds an echo chamber um, 
you know, where a small group reinforces a certain idea or perspective that may limit diversity and innovation. And so that concerns me a little bit. Um, let me just get to the bottom of my page here. And so I think, you know, in us taking this on and discussing this and coming up with a good strategy, it's really important that we look at, you know, all the pros of engagement and the, and the danger there uh, in really not having a wholesome and fulsome engagement uh, with our community. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Councillor Deacon. <coughs> Building on Councillor Tarnowski's comments, I'm thinking about the objective as right place and right time engagement. I want us to hit that target of quality engagement. And so I just noted a couple of things about objectives for what right time, right place engagement could look like. And forgive me if I repeat some, but I think that Councillor Tarnowski made some really excellent points. I think that this quality engagement, the objective that I have would be accessible, engages a broad representation of the community digitally and in person, um, building trust and awareness. It serves the shared goals of the public, the administration, and the council. Um, so keeping it, holding it true to that strategic plan. It offers meaningful opportunities for members of the public to question and to comment and it's also purposeful for township. It's not about just offering the opportunity, but showing people what is the impact of you showing up here, you giving this voice, how will you see this, when will you be engaged, um, what will that look like on the other end, how are we really taking that into consideration. And this concept of open government, it obviously feeds that concept of open government, which governments are striving for to maintain that trust with residents. And one of the aspects of, of open government is, of course, transparency. And I see public engagement, the objective of quality public engagement being something that isn't just transparency as a noun or a concept, but transparency as an action um, ongoing of government. and. Of course, because I always love to wear my measurement hat, um, my objective of this policy is that it's measurable, that we can actually measure um, against these objectives that will stew on and, and percolate and, and come to together, that those objectives are going to be measurable on the other end of that through that policy. Um, similar to Councillor Tarnowski, I think these objectives would improve decision making increase the shared sense of pride and belonging here in the township, create environments where partnerships can spark and flourish. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, it can also bring about quite a bit of efficiency, more effective enforcement, um, more efficient municipal service delivery ultimately. And, and I want to say too, acknowledge that it will create a better municipal workplace. One of our goals is to make this a great place to work. And when you can say that you engage really well with your residents, it's going to be a better place to, to be employed. Um, and similar, I, I want to say a couple of objectives that I don't have, because <laughs> you should say what you don't want just as much as, you, as what you do. It doesn't mean that everyone will agree. This policy is not a silver bullet of us, you know, aha, we, you know, 20,000 people all of a sudden have the exact same ideas. And I don't believe that it requires a drastic amount of new resources. I think that we should take our time with this, and uh, but I, again, I don't think that this is going to take quite a bit of resourcing um, beyond the thought and the care that the staff will, that the administration will be taking to put it together in the next few months. So that's my opener for number one. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Lalonde. <clears throat> Bon, mais moi, je vais, je vais, je vais tenter d'adresser carrément les, 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 les points qui ont été mis là. Euh, je remarque qu'on l'a en, en anglais sur les deux côtés de la salle. Alors, j'aurais aimé avoir peut-être un des côtés en français. Excellent. Puis, ça va, je vais revenir là-dessus, euh, euh, l'idée euh, d'avoir ces choses-là peut-être dans les deux langues. Euh, C'est un de mes points que je veux faire. Mais... Euh, on parle, on parle de, 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 
de... Là, je, je le vois moins bien. Là. OK. Euh, niveau d'implication, c'est certain que c'est ça qu'on cherche. Il y en a qui parlent de town hall meetings, peut-être en faire deux, trois, quatre par année, euh, d'avoir un, un vrai sens d'engagement à ce niveau-là, ou ce que peut-être euh, les topics, c'est les résidents qui pourraient les proposer d'avance, que ça serait bien entendu, bien compris par euh, le staff et le conseil pour que, mais qu'on vienne avoir ce, ce genre de réunion-là dans les premiers engagements. On, on va tous être pas mal au courant de ce qui va être euh, discuté dans le sens d'être capable de préparer pour ça. Euh, niveau d'engagement, euh, c'était écrit en Oui, OK. I feel like I'm on a news team now looking for the camera. Euh, point numéro deux, l'idée que le public, dans le processus de prise de décision, moi, je ne souhaiterais pas avoir le public impliqué dans, dans le, les processus de prise de décision. Ça, c'est… on a été élus, nous, les, les membres du conseil, pour, pour, pour entreprendre, pour absorber, pour euh, refléter euh, le peuple et les décisions qu'on a à prendre. Engagement, implication, influence, oui. Prise de décision, ce n'est pas évident pour moi que… J'aimerais voir euh, soudainement le public avoir euh, une responsabilité là. Mais je le dis ouvertement, c'est « it's up for debate euh, ». Je vais tout de suite aller au point 4. Je crois que, parce qu'on on en a parlé quelques-uns, euh, ce qu'on essaie de peut-être monter ici, c'est un genre de, de, de boîte d'outils, mais ce n'est pas évident que, quels sont les outils dont on a besoin. Et moi, ça me fait penser tout de suite à l'outil de, 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 en anglais, un survey. Je pense que ce serait, serait critique pour nous, peut-être, de, de demander dans un premier temps, dans, dans les premières étapes, qu'on qu 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 développe un outil robuste et, et à jour pour circuler à tous nos résidents avec des questions qui sont assez pointues, qui sont assez euh, « relevant », assez euh, euh, au courant en, en, en ce qui a trait à ce qui se passe dans notre municipalité, et qu'on qu sonde un sondage euh, au public de dire « bon, mais euh, que pensez-vous sur X, Y, Z? Euh, » Je pense que c'est bien important qu'on qu commence avec quelque chose comme ça, parce que c'est vrai que tout à l'heure, on va avoir des échanges avec le public et euh, j'ai hâte de, de voir ça. Mais dans un premier temps, ça nous aiderait beaucoup d'avoir peut-être un outil de, 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 de développer peut-être par un consultant ou des gens qui, sont, qui ont beaucoup d'expérience en, 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 dans le domaine de communication et euh, de nous monter quelque chose, de nous préparer quelque chose, puis d'aller au public dans un premier temps parce que moi, je serais inquiet d'aller trop loin même dans ces items-là, puis je vais, je vais même arrêter là où il me reste juste un point à faire, avant d'avoir le pouls euh, du peuple, si on peut le dire comme ça, euh, pour, pour vraiment de là commencer à, à rentrer dans, le, dans les, les, les issues juteuses qu'on pourrait penser d'avoir. Mon dernier point pour, pour une politique d'engagement avec le public, moi, c'est l'issue de la langue française. Et moi, je suis un Anglais qui parle mal le français, officiellement, euh, je vais le dire. Mais euh, moi, mon expérience avant de venir au Conseil, ça a toujours été euh, avec euh, la traduction simultanée. Euh, parce que quand je fais ce que je suis en train de faire là, de parler en anglais pendant que les autres parlent en français, ou vice-versa, quand je parle en français, puis d'autres parlent en anglais, je me demande qu'est-ce que ça peut bien faire au public qui sont avec nous. So I'm looking at people I know who I won't mention any names, but when I go back and forth doing what I just did now, I wonder, I wonder how effective that, that engage, you know, the engagement that might come out of that is is going to look like or feel like, because quite frankly, um, I would see it as, you know, and I have seen it watching council over the years as, as quite a bit of a challenge. Uh, 
Je sais qu'on a parlé, et ça s'est dit dans le passé, que les frais de, 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 de traduction simultanée, pourraient, ça pourrait coûter cher. Mais moi, je ne regarde pas le, le, le coût de la chose, je regarde la valeur de la chose. Et on est, on est une municipalité qui est grosso modo plus ou moins divisée en moitié-moitié en anglais-français, give or take. Et, et pour moi, ça, ça serait important. Je, je vous laisse sur ce point-là. Public engagement, it's, 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 the, it's effective communication. And uh, because we're a fully bilingual community, uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to hope that we could explore how, you know, I had a thought once that one night we'll all talk in French, and then at the next council meeting we'll all talk in English. But some people that I have a lot of admiration for said, that's not a great idea. But I want to leave that idea with admin that uh, I think this is a, a problem. I think it's a pretty significant issue. Uh, I've been on the other side for a long time watching, and now I'm on this side, and, and hopefully we can do something with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lallon. So you kind of touched on one of the things that I was going to mention as well, which is You know, what are the, you know, what will be the financial implications of any of the community engagement decisions that we make? Because there will be a price tag to that. Just want to make sure everyone is good in the audience. Thank you. So financial impacts of any decisions that we make. So budget times, uh, we'll have to look at that. I have what other options for engagement are actually out there? I mean, we, we currently have our website, social media, our, our electronic billboards, we have quarterly newsletters, we have daily, weekly emails that go out at, uh, no, making notices and whatnot. So what other options are even out there? Are there other options? I, I, I don't have an answer to, to that question. That's why I'm, I'm leaving it out to staff. And then, you know, finding out from the public what, what is their expected level of engagement and when do they expect to be engaged in decision making. We talked about it here. Are, they, are we going to be asking for everyone's opinion on every single item that we vote on? No. That's why we were elected. However, there are certain items that, that will require whether town hall meetings or whether they're public uh, sessions or, or whatnot. So, um, you know, I'm looking very much forward to hearing what, uh, what staff bring back to us. And Uh, moving on with this uh, with this topic, I think it's very important, and I think we, uh, you know, we're all looking forward to that. Councillor uh, Tiranowski. Merci beaucoup. It's interesting. So, you're correct. I, I agree. Realistically, we can't. Not all decisions warrant, or or it's feasible uh, to get the highest public involvement. Um, in doing some research and looking at answering this question, because because I was. It, it bothered me a lot because we want to empower, but at what level? Um, you know, we saw this tonight uh, when we're talking about, you know, going into closed sessions for certain decisions based on costs and so on. And so uh, in my research, I did find the uh, International Association of Public Participation. That's out there. That's a thing. And uh, they have five levels of public participation. So there is inform, consult, involve, collaborate and then empower. So I think there's a lot of day-to-day -day council decisions that were really, it's all about informing and we speak to informing residents and what do we do now? Can we do it better? Um, and then when we talk about consulting with residents and some of the decisions are more important or maybe evolving a lot, um, that's where surveys or public meetings I think become uh, uh, more important or tools that we can use. I think this is something that I've, I, I've always wondered. We, we've had these public meetings when we do uh, um, important kind of planning decisions around the industrial park. We've had some great meetings. Um, I've attended some of those meetings. There is, you know, a few people that show up, but maybe do some on some broader, 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 mon français ça, broader kind of uh, items. So I think that's interesting. And then as we go to more, uh, Uh, difficult decisions, parce que les enjeux sont encore plus importants. I think of the historical district that we had discussed a few years back. Uh, I would have loved to have, and we did have a fair bit of uh, 
uh, consultation with residents, but this is where uh, you kind of go to, to the collaboration piece, to the empowering piece. So I, th I think there's different levels depending on the, the importance or the, the, the amount of, um, you know, what's at stake in those decisions. And so I think that's something to look at. So I would encourage staff to look at this, uh, this Association of Public Participation and see how we can kind of implement that as well. Um, and I'll go as uh, Councillor Lalonde did. I'll just, oh no, actually I'll wait till, till the last point question. So I'll let Councillor Deacon. Councillor Deacon. Thank you. I really appreciate Councillor Tarnowski speaking before me because I'm largely <laughs> building on what he's saying, as well as Councillor Lalonde and Councillor Lorrain. Um, for the question two, I just wanted to add that I do see a need for a defined and sort of maybe levels of engagement programs for significant projects. And just to name that, when I say significant projects, I do mean small things that are impacting small groups of residents in big ways, as well as uh, larger projects that are impacting large groups to varying degrees. Um, I'd like us to have something that breathes it with those different needs of different residents that we do have folks living in villages, we do have folks living in very rural areas, and we don't want to be leaving the rural folks out of uh, being engaged on things that will impact them in, in big ways. Um, so this sense of this idea of having thresholds maybe to inform in, in a policy how that engagement could be conducted. Um, as well as, again, how the outcomes of public engagement are reported back. Um, again, wanting to anchor into everything we do, measurement and meaning for the residents so that they keep coming back and they keep bringing their voice and dedicating, frankly, their time, which is so pr such a precious resource. Um, and I just would like to build as well on uh, les commentaires de conseiller Lorrain au sujet de Le, le désir pour l'engagement, like what is the engagement that folks are looking for? I think I would like to ask what is their experience now? Have they come? Have they not come? Why or why not? What are the barriers? I think that that would be a very rich question to ask residents because it's it's easy to say, well, I want all the engagement all the time, but maybe if they've had positive experiences, what were those like? What did you ask? What sort of impact did you see that made you want to keep coming back? If you had negative experiences, same thing. Um, and uh, I, I think I'll, I'll pass it over. Uh, that's just my thoughts on number two. If there are other comments. If not, I can, I can continue on to three. Um, I think uh, I think m most people have already gone, so you feel free to continue on. <laughs> Let it roll, eh? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, how can the municipality better communicate and promote public engagement opportunities to reach a broader audience? I just had two things here: accessibility. Um, asking what how people are going to be able to come, when, where. Can you engage virtually? Have you tried to engage? Uh, and again, just hammering home on that, making it meaningful. I think that there is a lot of communication, as Councillor Lorraine commented, a lot of communication going out. Uh, so we, we can benefit from focusing on quality um, opportunities and, and relationships. Um, I'll, I'll pass it over. <laughs> just Councilor Tarnowski? Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Um, I'm glad you went before me on that one. Um, so I had, for that particular question, I, I, you know, we talked about public engagement events. Uh, so I reiterate that, and maybe that is just an open house on the upcoming budget as opposed to we have traditionally had, you know, what do you, wish lists. But, you know, a uh, public engagement event in terms of the process of the upcoming budget or, or any of the processes that we deal with on a regular basis here, I think would be interesting. I would certainly sit at uh, one of those and, and would love to have one-on-one -on -one chats uh, uh, or in groups. I think that's, that's an opportunity. Um, communication channels, I know we use a lot of them. The ones we use are typically one-way communication channels, and that's obviously realistic. Uh, is there, what, what can we do in terms of having more two-way communication? Um, 
And as Councillor Deacon alluded to, I think targeted outreach uh, in underrepresented groups is really important. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, community groups that, that are not represented here. Um, and I think that's, that's something that we need to go um, and outreach. Uh, and I think that's important. Um, yeah, that's it on, for that question. Okay. Anything else? Councillor Deacon. I can just jump into the final <coughs> question. Quels outils ou plateformes supplémentaires? This is tricky to answer at this stage because I do agree with uh, Conseiller Lalande's, uh, excuse, uh, oui, Lalande's comment about that it is, it's important for us to begin to understand where the opportunities lie in, imp in improving public engagement and, and going to the residents to gather those inputs. So that is um, a tool or platform that is, it's c'est évident uh, right now to say is some sort of a quality survey tool. Um, I've done a lot of, I've done some pretty big national surveys and so looking at a survey tool that's capable of conditional branching uh, that lends itself to multivariate analysis. A tool like that, uh, SAS, 1500 bucks you know, it's not, it's not a huge investment. Um, the investment might be on finding somebody who can design a really smart survey to get us the information that we need, but um, that's one of the things I'd like to um, hear from administration is as next steps, will we, would we be receiving a report, for example, on um, that sort of first scan of, of um, what the plan would be, I guess, to do a scan of both residents as well as on the township side. Township is a huge stakeholder here. What are some sort of an audit of what is being done for public engagement and what the outcomes are and, and how it's serving uh, the township's goals. So kind of those two sides of it. I see a research piece there, so I, I would like to hear from administration maybe in the next few within the next few meetings whether that's something that would be done um, something that they would include that would be uh, recommended to be included in this work as well as um, whether that would be something done in-house or, or done externally so with with that why don't I throw it to Mr. Gaudin uh, to respond and to to see how how we are right now with the engagement if you've gotten what you were looking for out of the discussion for this evening uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, a great discussion. Um, definitely have a lot of information to work through, uh, a lot of information to, to work off of. Uh, so there's a lot of terms that come come up uh, consistently from uh, from councillor to councillor. So, uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, for your question, I, I think I understood that you, what you you're asking if we're planning on kind of taking this information and um, preparing a plan and coming back to council before doing the works. And I think you mentioned investing in uh, survey tools. I just want to clarify that last point. Councillor uh, Deacon. Thank you. <clears throat> um, my question is about what are the steps, what are the next steps for this public engagement policy coming together and if administration would be coming back to council with a report that would include something around beginning to collect that data and analyze it in a meaningful way. Um, if it has significant budgetary implications, I imagine that would come back to us. Um, I also see the value in that coming back to us for um, us to be ensured that, that the engagement, the way that residents will be engaged, especially on this, is, is in the meaningful way that reflects the, the strategic discussion tonight. Okay. Mr. Godin. Uh, yeah, Mr. Um, so definitely we'll be uh, taking this information and speaking with the team, but I, I would expect definitely to have some type of action plan and to see what the options are there as far as uh, how to move forward and to, to present that to council to make sure we're still aligned. Okay. Councilor Ternoski. Uh, just my little uh, uh, couple of last points for number four. Um, so I, I had a digital suggestion box. I know we do have a, a place for residents to re reach out and comment uh, on the website. I don't know if there's something that could be um, easier, um, not that it's complicated to do that, but just more available, whether it's through a, um, you know, where you take a picture and you have a website or something like that. 
Um, and then the virtual town hall town halls perhaps have uh, town halls where it's just open to residents to come in, speak with council, um, and just kind of go, you know answer questions or or table questions so we can answer residents and just be more kind of open and available as as an as an organization uh, in that sense. So those would be the tools, and those town halls could be virtual as well. We did that through COVID, um, and so it allows us to. Uh, to kind of get together relatively simply. Um, and those could also be recorded as well and replayed by residents that couldn't attend. And so just another opportunity to, again, uh, engage in that transparency and an opportunity for residents to not just come up here to ask questions, but really to have an open dialogue uh, under those particular circumstances. Thank you, merci. Thank you. Any last comments, Councillor Lalonde? Yeah, uh, although I sort of sprayed and prayed all my four <laughs> answers all at once earlier, I appreciate everybody's patience with letting me do that or understanding. But on the fourth one, on the public engagement, on the um, we were talking about tools earlier and maybe developing a questionnaire. I, I expect and assume that um, a recent uh, survey that was prepared by a, a group of our residents uh, that was shared with council that I received, uh, some of us received, uh, will be taken into account as well. I think there's some in, uh, valuable information there too to add to what we gave tonight. So I'm hoping that that will be recognized and, uh, and made useful in the process as well. Okay, excellent. Any last comments, Councillor Deacon, before we move on? Yep. Why not? <laughs> it was difficult. I just want to be open about this question. It was difficult for me to answer the question about what tools and platforms because I feel like it's, it's a bit early to be asking that question before we know what the barriers are, what the experience of residents are. Um, and on the, on the other side of that, again, what is administration looking for? What, are, what is administration's experience with public engagement? I'm just really excited to get that information to come together and I have full confidence that you know, there's a list of 20 tools that we're using now, there's gonna be an even longer list and I love something like that, a good inventory of the tools that we can use. But at this point, I don't know if we need a wrench or a hammer, or maybe we need super glue, you know? <laughs> and I'm just really looking forward to, to the work that, it'll, that will come in these next few months and, and people being able to use their voice uh, to share their experiences of public engagement in a way that really brings those two pieces together, especially on the administration and resident side. Okay, excellent. And uh, I'll make one last comment before I throw it over to Mr. Gaudin. Just a reminder to everyone in the room and everyone out there that council is always available to you. Uh, go to our website. Our email addresses are there. Our phone numbers are there. You are more than welcome to communicate with us. And in fact, I think we all encourage you to do that when you have questions, comments, concerns, um, you know, from a public engagement perspective, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Sir Godin. Uh, merci, Mr. Martin. No, so I just wanted to thank uh, council members. Uh, if, I don't know if you had uh, more, more input or more, more uh, discussion, but uh, uh, for us, it was very productive. So we do have a good, uh, a good feel for where council stands and uh, what the vision is for the public engagement policy. So we'll be able to, to, to make sure we align with that. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, members of council. Thank you very much, uh, members of the administration uh, for, that, uh, for that discussion. So we will now be moving into closed session pursuant to sections 239, 2, 3, and 3.1 of the Municipal Act 2001, SO 2001, Chapter 25. To move, motion to move into closed meeting at the hour of 
753 to address matters pertaining to section 239 of the municipal act 2001 so 2001 chapter 25 to consider matters related to number one request from al blair to purchase a municipal property report cs 2024-06 and that's section 2c a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board two financial update on the recreational complex a verbal report Section 2J, a trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, or financial information that belongs to the municipality or local board and has monetary value or potential monetary value. And Section 2K, a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board. And Item 3, closed session minutes of the regular council meeting dated March 25th, 2024. So I'm, this is, I am uh, looking for a mover and a seconder, moved by Councillor Tarnowski, seconded by Councillor Deacon. All those in favor? Motion is carried. We are now in closed session. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out this evening. Merci beaucoup tout le monde pour être venu ce soir.